Hi YouTubers. Uh, for some time now I've been wanting to do a little piece on trilobites. Trilobites are, well, fossilised arthropods that uh, basically lived as a very large group, as it were. They lived between the Cambrian, around uh, right about 544 million years ago, and eventually became extinct during the uh, Permian extinctions around about 250 million years ago. Now, they had a 300 million year, perhaps even more, um, existence. And that is a very long time. But of course, they're not just a trilobite. There wasn't just one. We see more than 20,000 fossilised species that we know of at the moment. They did fossilise rather well. And uh, Obviously, living over this very large period of time, um, there are quite a lot of fossils of them. They weren't necessarily a creature that just invaded the entire planet and everywhere you look you'll find a trilobite. That wasn't really the case. They were, had their specialist little niches, etc. Now, I'm probably going ahead of myself because there's so much to tell you about them, really. But um, trilobites, and I've got a little one here. Um, it's a rather unusual little species of them, actually. Scutellum, um, as it was known as, and um, but the more classic, more classic sort of trilobite would be this sort of shape. As you can see, it's uh, considerably different, and they did diversify incredibly well. There's a couple of things about trilobites that keep turning up again and again, and. One of those things is the fact that they seem to suddenly appear in the Cambrian um, without any sort of ancestry. And secondly, it's uh, often picked on, is the miracle of trilobite eyes. And uh, I, I wish to address these issues as we go along. Now, I'm going to be putting some video with this, video footage uh, that I took earlier at uh, a friendly local fossil shop, which I thank them for, for uh, letting me do that. And um, hopefully I'll be able to talk through that as well. Um, haven't got a great deal of time, so I'll get on to the first bit. Okay, now trilobites are arthropods. Arthropods being the phylum. The phylum of arthropods, without much doubt at all, we can assume, started way back in the Precambrian. Today, arthropods make up more than 50% of the animals on Earth. We're looking at insects and, uh, of course, the arachnids, the scorpions, and, of course, all the crustacea. Animals with exoskeletons and segmented body parts, basically, and this phyla goes all the way back to that Precambrian era. Although we don't have a great deal of fossils from the Precambrian, or even the Precambrian era, what we do have is trace fossils of these creatures that uh, did exist. Uh, we're not sure what made them, but no doubt, and it seems very likely they were arthropods. We do have a few um, Precambrian candidates for the arthropods. If we look at uh, Parv Parvincorina, I think I said that right, yes. Um, I'll put a picture of that up, hopefully. This uh, is a likely candidate for a early type of trilobite arthropod. Arthropods in general, we've got uh, Sprigina. Um, again, I hopefully can stick a picture up of that. Now, this, this is a bit of a mystery, this creature. Um, mainly because I'm not quite sure whether it was an arthropod or, in fact, uh, part of the phylum for, for ourselves and the fish, etc. The, uh, the chordates. Um, but, nevertheless, it did exist and uh, it's, it's a clear candidate amongst others, and these creatures must have existed in quite large numbers. So what happened in the, in the Cambrian that made things different? And why did we suddenly see this big surge of, in animal life? Because in the Cambrian, there was a very rich life. It was all there. Clearly a lot of it started before then. Oxygen levels had risen considerably during this period. Early life did not need oxygen. Early life produced oxygen as a byproduct. When this oxygen became available, 
and there was a bit of a glut of it, then other animals could suddenly take advantage of this. The advantage of oxygen is it allows a body to slow burn its food. Things don't need to be consumed at the same rate. And it allows or allowed animals to grow in size and of course evolve much quicker. If we look at the arthropods today, and we particularly look at some of the very small ones that we find in plankton, for instance, we don't actually find uh, any fossil record of them. There are creatures around today that we have no fossil record of, although clearly arthropods. And that's today. We're now looking way back at 544 million years ago. And it's quite logical to assume that we're not going to find them then either. But this new world that animals were emerging into was a world where suddenly things could specialise. This slow burning of food with the use of oxygen, it allowed new things to happen. And of course arthropods were creatures that were ready made to evolve almost. As I've said, if you, if you look at these creatures, and um, this one in particular, we find the segmentation of it. It's a very simple form um, that can easily evolve. With the uh, trilobite, we have cephalon, the head, the thorax, which is, can be just one or two segments, or can be multiple, going up to multiple, multiple segments. And often at the end, we have a tail area. This, in this particular creature, uh, this particular specimen, it's very, very pronounced. It's the pygium, we call this. And, uh, but in others, um, if you look on this sample, for instance, you'll, you'll see it's hardly any um, pygium at all, or tail area. Uh, some of the early, interestingly at the moment, some of the very early um, trilobites did actually have a tail here as well. So, um, there we go. Um, there are creatures that, being segmented, these various segments, um, they could evolve quite easily and specialise, and that is indeed what happened. Okay, we're running out of time, so let's have a look at the uh, trilobite's eye. What makes it different from any other eye? Well, obviously its, its ancestry was laid down in uh, the early Precambrian with its uh, arthropod ancestors. We find at least 150 sort of arthropods of that time, and they all carried this sort of compound, well, mostly carried this compound eye that we see in insects today, this multi-hexagonal compound eye. What makes the trilobites different is the fact that their eye was made of pure calcite, which created a small prismatic lens. Now, on some of some uh, trilobites were totally blind. Some only had one or two eyes, but most carried this compound eye style in in this calcite material, giving them a crystal lens. The cornea that covered most of the eye um, on most species that had one single sort of cornea area of, again of calcite that covered the entire area, making the lens much more usable or these multiple lenses more usable. There's a schizochoral lens which appeared after the Cambrian in one particular species, the Phaseops. And this particular lens, each individual eye, which by that time it turned round, had more of a round shape, and every single eye had its own individual cornea, which gave it the ability to see much better, much clearer. Um, each single lens would have gone out at sort of a 90 degree shaft of light would have come in and the brain sorted out its environment around it and it gave it a much better view. This is basically all it was, a very good piece of evolution. Um, these creatures unfortunately died out in the Denovian period and never made it to the end of the trilobite's existence. However, that's, that's basically all they were. 
which is fascinating and interesting, but um, I'm afraid creation, just to say it makes creation is, is not true. Okay, I think I've run out of time. Peace for now.